More than half of the horses who dropped dead at Aqueduct Racetrack earlier this year might have been saved if more attention was given to their health. That's according to a new report released today by a task force investigating a spike in thoroughbred deaths at the New York track. Industry experts who reviewed the deaths of 21 horses at the Queens track four months ago say that veterinarians and officials of the New York Racing Association often cared more about filling the races than generating money than they did about the horses' well-being. The task force is now calling for tighter rules and better regulations of drug use. The report comes as Governor Cuomo prepares to sign a new law that gives him temporary control of the New York Racing Association. I checked in with NYRA board member John Hendrickson of Saratoga, who says he's very pleased with this report out today, saying, quote, it's a good day for the horses because this is a very proactive and professional report with solid recommendations. He commended the governor for commissioning it. There's no question it was a very bad year for horse deaths on New York tracks, but I wondered how the New York numbers compared to other tracks around the country. So I went to the Jockey Club Equine Injury Database and dug out the numbers. The national fatality rates show a decline in horse deaths since 2009. Just under two horses per thousand starts died on tracks around the country in 2009. That dropped to 1.88 per thousand in both 2010 and 2011. Now, over that same period, New York tracks outperformed the national average from a low of 1.67 to a high of 1.82 horse fatalities per thousand starts. Naira's communications director, Dan Silver, told me today that the rate at the Naira tracks has actually been below the industry average seven of the past eight years. A father shoots and kills an intruder only to find out that the intruder was his own 15-year-old son and a miracle in medicine that could help the blind see again. Plus, the roads, a uh, wet mess for most of the day, but can we expect them to dry out anytime soon? See, we'll have the forecast next. This CBS 6 Eye on Traffic is brought to you by attorneys Martin Harding and Mazzotti. Injured? Helping you is what we do. All right, here we go. We'll see how things are shaping up for that ride home. It's 787 and I-90 and uh, pretty smooth, at least from that picture. All right, this is the one we usually look at as the trouble spot, and it looks like it's getting that way. This is uh, the north way, uh, heading toward the Twin Bridges just past exit 7. Heavy volume, and remember, things are going to get really tough there again tonight when that weekend work begins on the Twin Bridges. The lane closures start at 10 o'clock, and what you're seeing there will become a parking lot. Mm -hmm. And finally, it's time 90 at the state office campus. And, uh, you know, volume but a smooth ride as people try to head home for the weekend. And they were out at all today. I'm sure they had their umbrellas handy. Yeah, it was just, it was just one of those uninspiring days on mm. many levels. I yeah. know we, the rain is always a good thing. but right. Need the rain, but it was kind of it was cold. It was damp. It was 
Yeah. Forgettable, I guess, yeah. is the word. Steve never is. How about it, Steve? Well, I was just going to say, how do you really feel about today? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty miserable out there, and it looks to continue into the evening hours, at least with some patches of light rain and drizzle. But the weekend overall, you know, won't be too bad. After a little drizzle, Saturday morning tends to let up. Uh, the rest of the day, for most of us, predominantly will average out dry. A lot of clouds, there won't be much of any sunshine, but generally dry, so that's not bad, 62 degrees. And Sunday, too, is probably going to average out mostly dry, but there will be an increased opportunity for scattered showers Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening and Sunday night as an upper-level storm moves in, so it may start to turn a little bit wet the latter half of the day, but we have a better chance of seeing a few breaks of sunshine on Sunday as temperatures head for the middle 60s. Right now, we've got a patch of moderate rainfall across portions of southern Columbia and southern Berkshire counties. This has kind of been sitting here. The showers are lighter a little bit further north through the Berkshires up into Bennington and Rutland counties. We've got patches of light showers now pretty widespread across Warren, Hamilton, Herkimer counties and the portions of Fulton County. And again, patches of drizzle certainly will be possible pretty much at any time this evening and overnight tonight. So not an awful lot of change, at least in the short term. And temperatures certainly, as expected, very, very cool. We're ranging from the lower to mid 50s with upper 50s down towards Poughkeepsie right now. And there won't be a lot of change in temperatures for that matter overnight as we stay under the clouds and with all the dampness and the moisture, we'll be upper 40s to near 50, I think, for low temperatures. So again, not much change there. So here's what's going on. A little compact area of low pressure is now spreading most of the steady rain, which came through earlier today across central and eastern New England. This low will continue to take a track towards the east-northeast. We've got a little bit of additional rain development here across central and north western New York. So some of that will slide east with time this evening overnight tonight and again generally keep things fairly damp. Farther north is our next weather system to watch for the weekend. It's this area of showers here that's associated with the developing upper level low. This will become a pretty big feature in the atmosphere, but initially it's going to drop more to the southwest than southeast. So most of its influence on Saturday will be across uh, Michigan, portions of western New York, Ohio, and western Pennsylvania. That's where most of the showers with this system will be. In the meantime, today's storm will be far enough offshore, so most of the showers will be across New Hampshire and Maine, and there may be a little bit lingering in the western portions of New England and maybe the Adirondacks, but a little wedge of fairly dry air, I think, for most of us on Saturday means not a bad day. Again, there won't be much sunshine, but there won't be much of any rain either. Then Sunday, the upper low will drift in like this, and that will cause the atmosphere to become quite unstable. If we do get any breaks of sunshine, the clouds will fill back in again, and we have a better shot at scattered showers from, say, the mid to late afternoon Sunday, Sunday night into Monday, and then this feature will pull out, I think, by Monday afternoon. But it now looks like it will be replaced by another system that's going to slip up the Appalachians or along the coast. I did mention Tuesday was uncertain yesterday. I've now changed Tuesday from mostly cloudy to cloudy with a pretty good shot of rain. So we could see a similar situation to today, although a warmer rain with temperatures in the upper 60s. And right now, Wednesday, Thursday, still looking okay. Clouds mixed with some sun, very moderate temperatures. It's October, but we'll be 70 or a little bit better. And then back into the mid-60s coming up on Friday. It'll be a cold front at some point later Thursday into Friday of next week. All right. All right, so this is just one of those kind of Volatile, is that a good word? Unsettled? And it'll be increasingly like that, of course, as we get deeper into the fall and eventually the winter, things get very, very active. But, you know, we um, could get volatile, too. I was too. just going well, to say. <laughs> believe me, I know, which is why I'm standing over here. Okay. He does know. I guess our reputation precedes us. But to put it in perspective again, today was a really heavy rain, really tough day. Mm -hmm. The yeah. weekend will not be like this. Okay, a lot good. of the weekend that's will not be like this. You often say it's in the eye of the beholder, but... Well, that's true. But, you know, today yeah. most of those eyes are saying... That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Thumbs down. Yeah. want any more rain in their eyes. Yeah, I think right. that's it. Thanks, Thanks Steve.